Good evening, everyone. And firstly, thank you to the Oxford Union for inviting me. Some of us enjoyed a, a, a dinner just beforehand. Um, I have to say that when the aubergine arrived for the main course, I did think it was a side dish. Uh, it turned into be the main course, and consequently, I'm still hungry. So if anyone's got a packet of crisps at the back, please send it up for the next 10 minutes. But thank you for the hospitality. Um, in arguing against this proposition, I'm going to make three substantive points, and I'm mainly going to talk about the UK because that's what I know best. Firstly, I want to interrogate a little bit more some of the climate claims that are made on the vegan side of the debate. And I'm going to argue that better than less meat, dairy, eggs, fish, and far better than none is the type that we are consuming. And that level of nuance is usually missing from debates that are put forward from the other side. Not all meat, fish, dairy is produced in the same way. Firstly, it might be good for you to take heed of some of Professor Miles Allen's research of this university. He argues, and I'm quoting here, that we don't actually need to lower meat consumption to stabilize global temperatures. And that's based on his research that looks at the short-lived nature of methane, which gets a terrible reputation in animal agriculture, but doesn't actually stay in the atmosphere permanently, but is often treated as such in the calculations that are used on the vegan side of the argument. And also take heed of research by Bangor University about the Welsh beef and sheep industry, Wales, Wales. So their research found that Welsh beef and sheep production was amongst the most sustainable in the world, actually emitting probably a third less than the global average that are often used in the calculations on the other side. Welsh pasture-based beef and sheep farming is not like the feedlot, intensive feedlot and ranching systems elsewhere in the world, causing very high emissions, deforestation, poor welfare. Justifiably, you may want to stop eating that kind of meat. Some of the systems on our doorstep here, the Cotswolds, Dalesford Organic, for example, wonderful, good quality, sustainable livestock production, that isn't the same as some of the figures used for global meat production for more unsustainable parts of the world. Should we also talk about fish? We've not heard much about fish. I'd say justifiably, you might think we should eat slightly less of the fish species that are unsustainable to catch, or that we don't think are farmed in a particularly ethical way. But what about the many species on the list of the Marine Stewardship Council that are considered sustainable in our waters around the UK? Hake, handline caught mackerel, place, um, also Dover sole, all sorts of different species that are on that sustainable list. Why wouldn't we catch and eat those if they're sustainable? What is the environmental damage caused by small boats leaving New Lynn in Cornwall catching those sustainable species? So I just want to leave that there. I think that we need more nuance with the environmental side of the debate. Not all meat, fish, dairy is the same. Now I want to move on to make a more positive case for why you should eat meat and dairy. Um, and I'm going to talk about nutrition. And I'm going to stand up a little bit for cow's milk, which has been trashed so far today. Now, how many in the audience, please put your hands up, and I might show my age here, how many people remember the days when the late great Sir Bruce Forsyth would come on our TV screens asking us to shout higher and lower? Anyone remember that? Some of us remember that. Now you're going to, I'm going to ask you now to play this game. And if you don't want to play, I'm hoping at least my side will help me. So I think I've got some props down here. Okay. So just imagine tomorrow morning, you go down to your hall's kitchen, you open the fridge door, and if the resident flat food snatcher hasn't been at it again, despite your increasingly passive aggressive notes on the fridge door, you have two options of liquid to put on your shreddies. Option A is this beautifully marketed and branded almond drink from the Mediterranean. It promises you all sorts, a source of calcium, iodine, all sorts of promises made. Option two is this rather plain bottle of cow's milk, which actually doesn't promise you very much. But let's look at some of the, the different nutritional contents of both. Let's start with the almond drink for calcium. So in 100 milliliters, 
120 micrograms from this. Now's your chance. Cow's milk, higher or lower in can calcium than 120? Only just higher, but higher, 124, and doesn't need to be fortified. Healthier bones and teeth. Now, shall we go to protein, which is very important for energy and, 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 and muscles, as the athletes in the room will know. Let's go for the almond drink. 0.5 grams in this. What would we say for the cow's milk, higher or lower? Higher, higher 3.6, seven times as much. So if, if, if the vegans aren't being particularly loud in this game, perhaps it's a lack of protein kicking in at nine o'clock at night. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, we can get the soy, uh, you can get the soy milk to have a look. I, I happen to, yeah. <laughs> indeed. These are the two things I happen to have in my fridge, of course. Let me go on, though. Let me go on, because there's some other things where I don't think the soy would win. But let's go. Let's go for iodine, lastly. 22.5 in this. In this, higher or lower? 31. Now, let's go for price, OK? Two pounds a litre on this stuff, approximately. Higher or lower for this? Lower. Lower, a pound a litre. Criminally low for a farmer. How many, yeah. many subsidies are required? Yeah. 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 Also, how many lipids, hormones, growth factors, and pus and glycogen? Well, I, I... Fortunately, I, 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 haven't managed to, I haven't managed to write down how many lipids or pus cells or different things are in here. But, how many carbs will starve for that? But if I'm going into a shop, I, 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 I think I'd be more likely to pay a pound for this. But let me go on, let me go on. I, I think the cow's milk, more calcium, more protein, more iodine, cheaper price. I think if a Silicon Valley whiz kid came up with this today, it would be called a superfood. Now let's go on to B12, shall we? Vitamin B12, which you want in your life. Very good for red blood cells, very good for the nervous system. Now this does quite well on this. 15% of your daily allowance here, only 12% in the cow's milk. But as a meat eater, I know where the other 88% is coming from in my day. As a vegan, where's your other 85% coming from? And here, I defer to the website of the Vegan Society. They say, and I quote, B12 is an exceptional vitamin. Most vegans consume enough B12 to avoid anemia and nervous system damage, but many do not get enough to minimize potential risk of heart disease or pregnancy complications. Well, isn't that comforting? Only some of you may self-inflict greater chance of anemia and nervous system damage, but many of you might self-inflict a greater risk of heart disease and pregnancy complications. They go on to say, the Vegan Society, the only reliable vegan sources of B12 are foods fortified with B12, more expensive, or supplements like our own. So they'll sell you a tablet for it even in liquid form for baby and toddlers. Le yes. Well, I have to say that I'm talking, I haven't made this point, I'm talking about a balanced diet of meat and dairy and eggs. And a balanced diet is very important for all many uh, meat rich, is very important for all the things I said. We should avoid eating the processed type. We should avoid eating too much. But it doesn't mean that we ought to go vegan. I want to lastly end on a, on a cultural argument. Now, some of these figures I'm about to quote might seem trivial in the context of the UK economy. The 1.2 billion pounds worth uh, of money we spend on fish and chips each year. The money for 10 billion eggs. 1 billion pounds worth of fish that are landed in the UK each year. But it isn't trivial, regionally and locally, for the people who depend on this for a living. The 44 million pounds of fish landed each year in Cornwall is very important for Cornwall. The 10,000 people who work on UK fishing boats, the, the 10,500 fish and chip shop owners and workers, 7,500 dairy producers, 255,000 people who work in the meat supply chain, 38,000 beekeepers, all able to put bread on the table because of these products. All those people, not just able to put bread on the table, but these are people who look after cultural heritage. The dry stone walls, the harbors, 
the communities, the landscapes that many of us visit and want to take photos of because we think they look beautiful, but are only there because many of the people involved in these industries are fantastic stewards of it. And you might say the cultural argument that change is disruptive and people will lose out isn't a terribly good one to make. And in some cases, I'd agree with you. The old sending children up chimneys was an awful thing to do. And there were better ways of doing it. Sending people down coal mines to work when coal is very damaging for the environment and there are alternatives. I agree change is needed. But in animal agriculture that I've hopefully argued, though briefly, certain types of meat and fish, etc., are not unsustainable. And if we're moving towards more circular, regenerative agriculture, in which products from animal agriculture, like manure, are very important to grow your plants, then I couldn't confidently and honestly look all of these thousands of families in the eye and tell them that what they were doing was bad for the environment, bad for the world, and that plant-based agriculture would be better. So I urge you to vote against the proposition. If you're going to vote for veganism tonight, I'd urge you to look all of these people in the eye. Could you do it? Could you look these people in the eye and say, sorry, time's up? I don't think you could. Please vote against the motion.